All right, hello and welcome to a little bit of an ES intraday review that you might find helpful. This is um, a chart of the ES intraday action for the 2nd of October 2023. And before I get started to talk about a total of three setups here, um, we need to get some situational awareness, meaning we should clarify for ourselves what is essentially the bias that we might have towards the market, okay? So looking at a chart at early October still presents quite a drift from the September. And September is historically not a good month in the markets. Um, historic performance, wherever you do the research on seasonality on the markets, um, for September is just it's just bad, right? It's, it's basically like the worst the worst month of the year to trade. So obviously it doesn't just end uh, right on October first. So you might still have certain effects, you know, coming over from September until you go into the remainder of the year where. Um, market conditions might be a little bit more favorable to the long side. That is not a guarantee, right? This is, these are just statistical um, results and as we know statistics can vary, okay? So the situational awareness is basically to say, okay, we are in early October on, on the 2nd. It's the first trading day of, of that month. And also, the Fed is not supporting the markets, right? The Fed is raising interest rates, or it's keeping interest rates at the same elevated level. Uh, so, you know, there are speeches by, by Fed Chair Powell that indicate they are going to be remaining hawkish. Um, and so there isn't really you're much, much going on in terms of optimism there. Okay. The other thing is, if you do uh, or if you run um, analysis on an individual stock level, you will find that, uh, for example, the stocks that were up 25% or more in September, you only get two tickers and they all have the individual story. Okay. And then for three months and up at least 50%, you just get six tickers. Um, of which one of them was already included in the other list. Again, those mostly have their own stories. They don't tell you anything about the broader market because there are just so few of them. In a really strong bull market, you get way more tickers in here and it will be really hard to actually pick the ones um, you know, that, 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 you want to, that you want to buy. Right? because the choice is so good, right? Okay, so those are just three examples, the seasonality, the Fed action, and also the individual stock level that can give you a bias for the market. Um, I also uploaded a video a while ago, it's called um, Situational Awareness in Trading. Uh, it's part of the Trading School playlist, where I mentioned way more indicators way more um, facts to, to check um, so you can make it easier for yourself to determine w what market regime you're in what you what your bias should actually be now when you when you then finally you know come or arrive at a bias um, and you say this looks pretty bearish then we should also look at, you know, like larger time frame charts, etc. That's all fine. But for the most part, when you then, when it really comes to trading, um, you might more be looking for short setups. Okay, when you have um, a bias based on the things that I just explained. At the same time, you also need to be careful because you can always get swings back intraday. Right. So for example, if we look at where we are in DS right now, I'm just gonna zoom out here. We are sitting between, um, between some structural levels. We have a horizontal here, and I can 
show you this on the one hour chart. There's a horizontal here that has been tested multiple times here. Sometimes it rejected the price, sometimes it tried to act as support. Sometimes it had like false breakouts, you can see all this here. And then more recently, there seems to be a new trend line coming up here. We're just sitting right in this area. So naturally, when you have a lot of structural stuff, um, price can get quite choppy. So you have to be mindful of that. That intraday, you do not just see swings one way, you can also see swings the other way. All right, so let's get back to um, to um, the first trading day of the month, the October 2nd day. So let me just um, zoom out a little bit here and then we're just going to get started. I'm not going to look at every single candle, but just see if we get any, you know, formations going. You already saw that I'm going to discuss a total of three uh, different setups here but you know let's just pretend we don't really know them yet so the market starts here we have a we have a short bias we are, we are basically looking for short setups okay so <clears throat> the first thing we see here after the open is the price pushes up it goes back down it pushes up it comes back down so the first question is is this actually a bad pattern you know just out of curiosity because we don't want to trade long we we don't really you know care for the long side but even if we did we could see here that the pullback is not at least 3a2 it's only 367 now some might say oh, i can still take that that's fine and some do and they might work for that but if you have the bias then you can probably avoid getting stopped out down here right some people will say I don't care if we get wicks through through a level like like X. Let me just put that to 886, the official trigger level. Some people would say I don't I don't care if we undercut X as long as long as we don't close below it. The problem with the strategy is that where do you put your stop? Because obviously now you have to wait and see how this candle closes. If this candle just, you know, goes all the way down and closes, you know, way lower, um, your, your risk parameters are obviously different. So you, you might have to make an assumption where price action should, should stop, even if it just, you know, wicks, wicks through and then it goes, uh, goes back up, right? So at some point down here, you would have to make a decision where to put your stop. Anyways. We are not one. We don't want to trade to to the long side, and this is also not, um, you know, a proper pullback here. So let's forget about the bet. Let's um, let's keep moving here. So now price action goes up. There isn't really significant, you know, pullback here or anything. It just goes up. And price action goes down. Again, there's there's nothing to do right now. We can try to <clears throat> anticipate a little bit earlier that, you know, this might be a pullback of sorts. So we measure that. Go down to here, we have 7 to 6. So that could be a Gartley pattern, for example. But it would be a long Gartley. We are not interested in it, but we can still monitor it. Okay. So now we are here. So if you're still interested in the long Gartley for whatever reason, which would be against the bias. You could now just look for an entry at 786 or lower with the extensions. However, you'll then quickly find that the Gartley is not going down anymore, right? Which it is supposed to, it's supposed to just break lower. It's not doing that. It's actually building a strong candle to the upside, another one. So this idea can be abandoned quite quickly. But now you look at this and you go like, okay, it pushes down, it goes back up, let's measure that. 719, okay, that's a Gartley as well, but it's a bearish one. It goes down again, it holds this level here at the KFA, and then it goes back up. So now we can measure, okay, 786 for extensions. 
786 would have been a little bit lower. The actual trigger here was at 807. So that's our first setup now. We can enter the trade here. Or we could have measured the second trigger for the guard. They would be high up there, but it didn't get filled. And the third one would have been just an ABCD. This one also sort of coincided with the 786. That was a valid one as well. All right. So you got your first trade on. You need to get in a trigger level where ABCD is combined with 786. The 1272 didn't quite work. If you have, uh, if you're wondering about the Gartley trading school playlist, I explain the Gartley right there. Okay. So now price goes down and down. So at this point here, we have filled the pattern. This is definitely where you should have taken, you know, a chunk of your position off, um, you know, and maybe you just leave a little bit of a, of a retainer on. Goes a little bit lower. And then it starts reversing. And then it goes slower again. And it hits a structure here. You see this? Which is this, this trend line. So at some point you should take more partials, right? This is almost double the height of the pattern here. So it's good timing to, to take some, some more off the table here and be almost completely out of this trade. Okay, so let's look at the price action. Is there anything else here that might be interesting? Let me just measure that a little bit. Maybe we get a cipher here or something. But this is not enough of a move down, right? You can also the way price action behaves just go sideways and up. So that's not something that we want to look at for a cipher. This is not the correct behavior, right? So at some point, it's now 11, 11 o'clock, so one and a half hours in. And we're still looking to find any short setups here. So this here for a moment also looked like a cipher, but you can see how strongly this pushes up. Now we want to take note here. The session so far looks like this. This was the high of the session, also the anchor point of the Gartley with X. High of the session, this is the low of the session. And what usually happens is, when the highs get taken out, you can watch for a specific setup, it's called the ICT setup. I think some guys call it the ICT silver bullet setup. ICT is short for Inner Circle Trader. That's a person on YouTube who says he has about 30 years of trading experience and um, has some setups that he has presented. It's quite a large uh, followership. Um, I think he has almost a million subscribers now. Um, so you can check out ICT, Inner Circle Trader. You will find this guy here on YouTube. Um, and he has developed a setup and I'm going to show you the setup here as an example because that's that's coming up. So basically, a prerequisite for the setup is that market highs or lows are being taken out. So what usually happens is when you have um, a short bias in the market, which is what the situation is right here, you're waiting for the lows of the day, for example, to get taken out. But then the price action doesn't really follow through, right? So they're basically sucking all those guys in who just want to short when breaking the lows of the day, which can work sometimes if you have a really strong trending day, like yesterday, for example. And yesterday is not the 2nd of October. This is actually the 3rd. I'm recording this a little bit later. Um, you know, when you have like a break of the lows, it can also just continue to go lower, but then the setup will not come into play anyways. However, if you see a day or have a day where they take out the lows, they already did it here after the open, right? Um, 
and then it did it again here. And then they ran this whole thing back up and took out the highs. They have now done two things. The guys who wanted to short, they had to cover. They run up the price action to a higher level where it's better for institutional money to short. And they give hope to the guys who actually want to buy here because they think it's a breakout by presenting very strong candles. That's a, that's a typical way to suck retail in, right? Retail traders are being taught by numerous, um, you know, educators, books, whatever's out there, or just, you know, traditional uh, technical analysis books that a breakout to the upside is something they should be looking for. Even though those breakouts failed so many times, um, the success rate is not very high for breakouts because the market has a tendency to reverse and test various price levels again and again. This is something that most newbie traders, they, they only find that out the hard way, right? Because they wonder why their breakouts don't work. And especially in the market, as I presented it in the beginning of this video, um, breakouts are very unlikely to work, very unlikely to work. So they, they pose a very strong breakout here. They take out the highs of the day. And then they're consolidating, they're consolidating. And at some point here, you will get what is called a fair value gap. Now, I have to actually draw this manually. There is an indicator you can use, actually various ones for so-called fair value gaps. The fair value gap happens right here. I'm going to zoom in in a second. So. We took out the lows, just for context, we are bearish. We took out, based on our situation awareness, we took out the lows of the day, then it pushed it higher, it took out the highs of the day. So now, the signal that this ICT guy is using is, is fairly simple. You know, whenever you have a gap up here, between a candle like this one here, this is really hard to see because it's such a faint candle but you can, you can probably make this out somehow. So we have the situation that there's a low of a candle right here. Then the candle kind of goes lower and the next candle has the high here. There's, there's a gap. Do you understand that? Let me draw that very exactly here. And let me just move this around for a second. If I can do this in trading view. Why can I only move this up and down? Try it like this. It doesn't work with the freaking hell. Anyways, so there's a gap here. So gaps are not only the ones where there is no price action, because typically you are being taught that what is a gap? You have basically a candle. I don't think anything is here for a gap. This is just too liquid. But usually we just take the we just take this. This is a gap, right? This is a gap. This is a gap between the regular sessions. If you use extended sessions, there's no gap here, obviously. It's unlikely, right? But <clears throat> this is a typical gap, you know, that's that's being taught, you know, that there's no price action at all. There's no price determination. But you can defer de you can determine or you can define gaps in a different way. And this is not just by ICT, there's also people like Al Brooks was you know another veteran trader out there who also defines gaps like that like for him a gap is you have a low here and then a high here but even though the candle goes through it right you know there there's still a gap between these two the low and the high you see that you can also make the same case for uh, for the long side it's the same thing so this year is, is the first indication for the guy's setup after we have run through the low of the day, the high of the day, and now we have this. And then the next indication is that you will have price action coming back and spiking into this fair value gap here. It actually happens twice. And they're not able to close below, uh, close above it or anything like it. They're not able to, to fill this gap. Right, because they're still just wicks here. They're not really able to fill it. So having said that, 
Um, this is the setup. This is a, a short setup. Okay. And then price action starts going down. And this is, this is a nice setup um, because obviously you can see it goes down quite a bit. In terms of profit taking, just want to show that. So this is the gap. In terms of profit taking, um, it's, it's fairly simple. It uses like a 50% um, or 50 percent um, point to to the to distinguish between what he calls a discount price area and the premium price area. So if you connect the high to the low of the day here, then you have to put this at 50 percent. I'm sorry. Wait, this is risk four. Actually, I'm, I'm this is not right what I'm using here, but I, it gives you an idea though. Um, you basically have to measure the high and the low and then you just take the midpoint, the 50%. Okay, I'm just eyeballing this here. Um, this here is basically for, for the long side, this is a premium, um, this is a premium area, right? You pay more above this, this 50% threshold than you do down here. And so he uses the 50% as a target. So basically gets in here and then he, he sells a chunk of his position right down here. Then he might hold some more and sell that later. Okay. I don't want to dive too deeply into it. The guy has over 500 videos on his channel. So if you're bored, you go ahead and watch those, right? But this is just a very quick explanation. So for me, taking profits here, yeah, sure, you can take some profits. But it gets way more interesting to hold and see what happens. And so as you can see, later in the day, we, we just drop lower and lower. And then things are really interesting. Right? Then later in the day, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to not really discuss the lunch hour, New York City lunch hour here. This is usually just chop between 12 and 1, 1 30, you might get better setups again. That also avoids that you sit in front of the screen all day long. So you might just come back into the markets at around 13, 30, 1 30 p.m. to start looking at them again. And what you notice is I'm getting, you know, a bit more price action down and goes back up. And what you should be eyeballing automatically is, is this, um, this exposed stop level, right? So whoever has shorted it and price has been going down at some point, especially with this consolidation price starting to run up, they all put their stops right here. Okay. That's, that's what people are being taught. Um, you know, like when, when stuff goes up or down, has a bit of a pullback visible and then it goes down again and then it comes back up. You should just put move your stop. That's what most people do. So there, this, is an, this is a relevant area here for taking out this particular stop. So this is something you have to be aware of in, in a pattern formation. I'm going to show you why. At first, I'm going to move this out of the way. Just forget that it's there. At first, people think that this is going to be a bad pattern. Do you see this? If you just draw this, when you see this develop, you're very much likely to say, okay, there's the down move. This is the pullback to 523. So that's the criteria for a bad pattern because it cannot touch 618. So it cannot be higher. Then it goes back down at least 618. Here we have 882. That's fine. And then price pushes back up, right? And then it might ease back a little bit. That's fine. Then it finally goes to the trigger level at 886. And then things seem to start working, right? They look like this. So if you're waiting for confirmation, you probably shorted this at some point down here. Now, what is the problem with that? This one here is the problem. Because everybody has their stop sitting there, as I said. 
So even though you might be taking the bet here as an opportunity for a trade entry, and maybe that's not even so terrible because the bet touches 3A2. At 3A2, you have to move your stop to break even. So whatever happens when price should come back, and it will in a moment, um, you don't get hurt. You will get stopped out at your entry. But depending on where your entry was, um, it will happen you know, sooner or later. Um, if this should have worked, then getting or putting your stop to break even when you got in here is obviously more risky because it just takes price to just spike back a little bit before it goes all the way down. It will take you out for nothing. So usually getting in at the trigger level, especially in the bet, is somewhat advisable, right? Because it's already such a low risk when it goes to X, right? So why would you want to wait for extra confirmation? It's just a very small risk anyways. Okay. Okay, I just want to mention this. So now you are basically okay because this bad pattern can basically not hurt you, right? It goes even a little bit lower here, so everything should be good. And then price goes back up and it revisits the trigger zone. And then it does this, it takes out X. At this point, when you see this, and don't mind the next bar yet, this point when you see this, you should rethink what kind of pattern you might actually see here next. You should not just give up and say, oh, the bad pattern didn't work, right? That's stupid, so forget it. No, you should actively think about what did I miss here? Is there something else? And if you look closely, you can actually draw a butterfly. And the butterfly would give you the criterion that something, you know, like a, a low or high gets taken out because that's the definition of this of the formation, right? It forms a triangle and then it spikes into a former high or low. And this is exactly what it does here. Do you see this? And the measurements are very nice. So what you can do is the fib extensions. You see where it goes. It touches 1414. This is the stop here, the 1618. You can't go there. 1414 touches that. You can also get it early at 1272 or whatever. You could also wait for confirmation here. This is the first candle that closes below the low of the previous candle. That's a sign of bearish strength. And if you then wait for a follow through down here at the low of the candle, one tick lower, that should be enough of a confirmation. Then you can short it here against this high. And then you just watch it go down and make money. Okay. So that's the third and last setup I wanted to discuss on this intraday basis. Later in the day, price will turn around yet again. But let me just show you this first here. Where does the price action go? Here, down here, we almost reach the low of the pattern, but you have to be careful. And I showed this trick before. Go to a line chart. It only considers the closes of each candle. And then look at where we are down here. Where should you pick your target? Here, or maybe better there, or all the way here, where there was only a wick. I would put my target here at 4297 and not at 4295 Even though it's only a point and 25 um, cents away, you know, this can make all the difference. This can make all the difference because sometimes they don't touch the absolute low of the pattern or the high of the pattern. And this is the same thing here, if I remember correctly. Right? So use the line view. And just say, okay, we, we don't even take the low here. We play it safe. We take this guy. Not a problem. You'll get filled and then everything moves back up. And maybe you kept the retainer in here. That will get stopped out at some point because I think price into the close, yeah, spiked up and then took out um, the former trigger level. Okay. And again, we are not interested in the long side here. 
you know, finding a setup here, if I look at it, I would have a hard time finding anything. So I just wanted to discuss that day in the ES, um, Monday, October 2nd, starting with the bias to say, for various reasons, we are short only, we're looking for short patterns. And then, you know, to figure out, okay, what about highs and lows, you know, where would people place stops, etc. And then you can make <clears throat> better decisions. And this would be a pretty sweet day. You have, um, you know, two working patterns, harmonic patterns. You have an ICT setup that goes all the way. So you can make a lot of money on a day like this. Where everybody else just says, oh, it's just chopped, you know, the market ran up and down, what can I do, and and so on. I mean, this is the whole session. This, this session here looks like untradable shop, but it's not untradable. It had great opportunities. But you need to have the right toolkit. You need to know a bit about harmonic patterns. You should educate yourself about other trader setups like the ICT guy. You need to know how to create a proper bias for yourself. And there you go. All right, guys, I hope you found that somewhat interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and talk to you soon. Bye.